Many of us live in a very digital world and we need lots of technology vocabulary to speak about it. Perhaps one of the most difficult aspects of learning this vocabulary is prepositions. Today, we'll help you get them right. Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hi, I'm Reza. And my name's Craig. And with nearly 50 years of teaching between us, we'll help you improve your English and take it to the next level. How are you, Craig? I'm very well, thank you. It's good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm feeling really well. I'm feeling good. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, this recording session, as always. Me too. It's going to be great and interesting to see how our prepositions are when we're speaking. Is it on the podcast or in the podcast? Ooh, good question. For me, both sound okay. Yeah, maybe on the podcast, I think, might be better, but you could probably use both. So we're going to look at prepositions and some technical vocabulary in answer to a listener question. But first, listen to Jorge from Colombia, who sent us a voice message. Hi, Craig and Reza. This is Jorge from Colombia. And first of all, I want to say thank you for your podcasts. I think they're really good and you complement each other very well. Um, well, I'm currently working as a gymnastics coach here in my country, but I recently got a job offer from the United States as a gymnastics coach too. And I'm really happy, but I'm also worried about my speaking I have been studying a lot of vocabulary, specifically in gymnastics, but I still have some problems to speak. So I want to ask you about how can I improve my my speaking? What tools or advices you can give me? Because when I'm trying to talk, my mind got blocked, and I, I don't know why. I just want to talk like more fluently, and I want to be able to to apply for that job offer. So thank you so much and thank you for your podcast. You should definitely apply for that job offer, Jorge. I think you're ready to go to the US to work. Unless, of course, you want to come here to Valencia and practice English with me and help me to lose weight and give me some private gymnastics lessons. That's another possibility. But I think maybe the US will be a perfect place for you. And don't worry, because judging on your message, your speaking is very good. And I think it will be a matter of a week or two, or maybe three, just to get used to speaking English every day. So the first few weeks might be a bit difficult, but very, very quickly. With your level of English, you're going to feel comfortable with the language. So just close your eyes and jump and the water will be lovely and warm. Yes, I'm fascinated by Craig's idea. Jorge, I would pay good money to see you giving Craig gymnastics lessons. <laughs> I would pay money to see that because uh, there's a certain there's a certain strange side to me which likes to see the bizarre. So l let me know if that ever comes to fruition. You like to see me in pain. That's what it is, Reza. What might be interesting for you, Jorge, is a lesson we did, or a podcast even, a podcast that we created on gym and exercise vocabulary. So... If you have not listened to that yet, that might help you. Go to inglespodcast.com slash 75. Jorge, your message was very good, as Craig said, but I think we could help you with one or two little things. You said, when I speak, my mind got blocked. But you're talking about all the time, so we wouldn't use a past, we would use a present. When I speak, my mind gets blocked. Not got, because it's all the time or a repeated action. When I speak, my mind gets blocked. And also, Jorge, you used the word advice, but you said advices. However, advice is an uncountable noun. So instead of saying advices you can give me, it's better to say what advice can you give me? 
So we speak about pieces of advice or some advice, and there's no S on that uncountable noun. Next, we have a message that's very close to us here in Valencia. It's from Ricardo from Alicante. Hello, Greg and Reza. This is Ricardo from Alicante, almost your neighbor. This is my first message, and I am a humble listener of your podcast. I found your channel by chance, but I noticed quickly that this podcast could be important in my English learning process. Well, the next time it will be longer and better, and you will check my progress after a few sessions of your excellent podcast. Thanks for the opportunity to speak and a big greeting. Tata for now. Thank you very much, Ricardo, for your message, which was really, really good, wasn't it? Yes, Ricardo, that was a very, very good message. It was very clear, and I don't think I heard a single mistake. Me neither. It was perfect. So, well done. K keep practicing, keep it up, and if you continue like this, your English is definitely going in the right direction. And as we mentioned in the last podcast last week, when we spoke about checking your progress and constant improvement, it's a good idea to keep these messages on your phone so that you can have a record of your English over time. So if you are sending us messages or just recording on your phone for your interest and your study, make sure you keep those and go back. And it's really encouraging and motivating to see the progress over time. What's next, Reza? Next, we've got another voice message, but this time it's all the way from Lorenzo living in Germany. Hi, guys. This is Lorenzo, a sales guy who is living in Germany with his wife. I just came across you because I was looking for sales vocabulary and I just found your podcast amazing guys and you are so lovely i also wanted to tell you that i never learned english per se i just took a course in 2010 yeah and it was with a method it was called the Callum method i don't know if you know it but please let me know what you think about it if you know it and guys i think i i, I also have a new topic for you prepositions are always confusing me And I call the topic prepositions for the digital world. For example, should I say I have some information in my phone or on my phone? I have some information on my cloud or in my cloud. I have some information in my email or on my email. Well, as you can see, this is not easy for me. And it would be really nice if you could help me, guys. Well, again, thank you very much. What you're doing is great, guys, but just great. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Lorenzo. It was lovely to hear from you. Thank you for your kind words about the podcast as well. And I have not heard of the Callan method. Have you, Reza? I have heard of the Callan method. And there, there is, or certainly there used to be, but I think there still is today, an academy, a place where they teach the Callan method. I've seen it advertised in Valencia. But to be honest, I don't know much about it, Lorenzo. I don't know. I've, I haven't come across any students who have learned there. So I can't tell you much about um, student feedback from there. But I tell you one thing I can't, I can't resist saying that it's an interesting name, the Callan method. Callan, of course, is quite a common surname in, in Britain and Ireland. But of course, in Spain, people might look at it and go, Callan? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Shut up, be quiet. <laughs> the be quiet method, Callan. I can't resist that little little joke. But no, I can't say either good or bad things about it because I, I don't know, to be honest. But yes, I have heard of it, Lorenzo. All I can say is that If everybody who uses that method speaks like you, it must be a pretty good method because your yep. speaking is very good. It is. It is very, very good. So obviously you didn't take the shut up or Cayenne method to, to heart and you're, you're very fluent and, and very accurate with your English. But we do understand 
the problems that you mentioned with prepositions. And we have done a few podcasts on prepositions, so I'm going to list them quickly here. But you may be walking or driving or riding a bike, so you may not be able to write these down. Don't worry, you can find all the links to these episodes in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 367. So we spoke about the prepositions of time in, on, and at in episode 325. We spoke about the prepositions out, up, of, and off in episode 139. Dependent prepositions, so that's nouns followed by a preposition, in 116. And adjectives followed by a preposition in 115. And verbs followed by a preposition in 114. And also we spoke about prepositions coming at the end of questions and phrasal verbs, and that was in episode 51. So all the links are in the show notes to this episode and just go inglespodcast.com slash 139, 116, 115, etc. So hopefully that will help you also, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, you asked a specific question. You said, should I say in my phone, on my phone, in, on the screen on or in the cloud, in or on my email? Well, let's try and answer your questions. Craig, what would you say with my phone? Well, that's interesting because I'm not sure I might possibly use either in or on. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's connected to if the information is in the phone itself or in the cloud, in la nube. Then I thought, no, because I would say on my hard drive or in my hard drive? I'd probably say both, wouldn't you? Yes, but my way of looking at them would be slightly different. If I say on my phone, I'm probably talking about information which I'm going to show you or myself now. Whereas in my phone, I think more of information which is stored there yes. somewhere, but maybe I'm not going to access it right now, or maybe it's going to take me a while. It's a bit more complicated to access it. It seems deeper somehow if it's in, whereas on, like it'll be coming up on the screen soon. I agree with that. And that takes us to the next example, because on the screen is clearer It's on the surface of the screen. It's not inside the electronics of the screen. So with screen, I would definitely say on. On the television, on the screen, on the computer screen, on the phone screen. You already mentioned in the cloud. Yeah, I would never say on. Always in the cloud. Yep. And for email, in my email, on my email... I might say on my email if I'm talking about, look what's on my email if I'm talking about what's on the screen on my email. I might say on my email because it's on the screen. That's on the screen though. Yeah. Or maybe you'd use on my email list, but then you're speaking about the list, so it would be on. I, I'm going for in my email. For example, I'll send you the information, and as you can see in my email, I have given you a list, blah, blah, blah. So it will be in the email, which is totally different from attaching something to your email. So if your email has an attachment, you would write, I'm attaching the PDF to this email. Yeah, I would agree with that. In my email is much more common, much more useful. By the way, speaking of being on an email list, if you're interested in being on our email list for this podcast, go to inglespodcast.com and then you can sign up. There's another phrasal verb to sign up for our email list and we will send you an email every month about this podcast. Craig, how many people have subscribed to Upper Inglés con Razzy Craig? That's difficult to know because we started this podcast in 2013. So over the years, well, thousands, even tens of thousands of people have subscribed to the podcast. But it's changing now. We used to say, please subscribe to the podcast. However, Spotify, Apple Apple Podcasts, they're changing and making subscriptions, meaning paid subscriptions, 
available to podcasters. Now, I'm pretty sure this podcast will always be free, so I don't think we'll be charging you for this podcast. But if you want to not miss an episode, you need to follow us. So you subscribe to a service and you follow a podcast. Download, of course, is a word which most of you will know in English. Download, descargar. But what about the prepositions which go with it? Well, you download something from the cloud or from internet or from a website. Download from a place to your device. For example, I downloaded a PDF from the website to my laptop. My laptop would be the device or to my, to my mobile phone, for example, your device. And I'm sure you know the opposite of download is upload. So if you upload data, you upload data from your phone to the cloud, for example. So from a device to the internet. Now, these days, partly because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot more people are using things like Zoom, Skype, Teams and other platforms where you can get in touch with people through video conferencing. I said through there, but you can also say that you connect on Zoom, Skype, Teams, etc. So you can connect on or through a video conferencing platform. Reza, what's your favorite platform to connect on? Good question. I'm no expert. I only know a few, but of the few I know... I would say for video, if video is really important to me or that's the most important aspect of the meeting, Zoom, but not for audio. <laughs> Curiously, I don't think Zoom is the best option for audio. I think good old Skype are good for audio. It can be. Yeah, I don't think they compress it as much, but I think the audio on most of these free services is very bad. But I agree. I like Zoom as a service to connect on Now, when you're connecting on or through Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams, etc., you're probably sitting at your desk and use the same preposition for your computer. So you can say, I'm sorry, I'm not at my computer at the moment. I'm not at my desk. I'm not at my laptop. So that means you're probably out and using your phone. So to be at your computer or at your desk. However, you can also say on the computer. For example, where's Craig? Oh, he's busy. He's on the computer. That means he's using the computer. I'm working on it. Yes, or so with it. If you're at your computer, it means you're in the area, the desk or your study, wherever you tend to have your computer and you're using it. Whereas to be on the computer focuses on the fact that you're using it at the minute. You're busy using it. You can be on Zoom, can't you? Or on your phone. When you work for a company, so you work for a firm or a company, you can say, I work for Google, I work for Microsoft. But the area that you work in needs the preposition in. So I work in teaching, for example. Maybe you work in web design or you work in app development. So you work for the company, but you work in a particular area. If you're a member, if you're a part of a community, a social media community, I should clarify, you're on it. For example, I could ask Craig, are you on LinkedIn? I am, but I don't use it. <laughs> That's I'm, I'm on it, but I don't use it. I don't look at it very much. Oh, don't feel embarrassed. My case is exactly the same. I have messages from a couple of years ago that I, I haven't answered. So <laughs> you didn't feel very embarrassed. Why did you um, uh, sign up for it? Why did you decide to be on it and not use it like me? 
Oh, I, I sign up for most things. I sign up for lots of platforms, but sometimes it's difficult for me to get to know how to use them. For example, I'm on Instagram, but I don't really understand the best way to use it for for me or for what I do. But I'm on it. Are you on Instagram? No, no. Instagram never really appealed to me because I think the, the, the name says it all. Instagram, I presume they're playing with the word instant. And that type of thing doesn't particularly attract me. So Instagram isn't my cup of tea. For me, as regards IT, above all, I'm into things. I'm into things. If you say you're into something, it means you're interested in it. I'm into things which um, need a bit more depth, a bit more detail. If I just want to send a quick message, WhatsApp will do me. So you're on WhatsApp? I'm on WhatsApp, yeah, but just for messages. So apart from WhatsApp, what other platforms are you on? What's up and LinkedIn, which I, like yourself, don't use. What else am I on? Are you on Twitter? Nope. You on Facebook? Nope. You on Snapchat? Nope. You on TikTok? Nope. You on Clubhouse? Nope. You're not on much, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, all those you mentioned, are, are you on them? Um, I'm on them, but I don't use them. I mainly use Facebook and... Twitter on the Mansion Inglés channels. So facebook.com slash Mansion Inglés. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, at Mansion Twit. Those are the main ones, Facebook and Twitter at the moment. Now, interestingly, I received a WhatsApp recently from a chiropractor. That's right, a chiropractor. Those people who click your bones into place, they they move you around so you get comfortable. They, and work, they, they work on your back, don't they? The back and other things, yeah, your shoulders, your hips a bit. They, they put those bones into place, chiropractors. Now, I've only ever been to see her once, and she was very good, by the way, I'd like to repeat, but she sent me a message on WhatsApp, and it was a message that went out to all her contacts, I guess, her professional contacts, saying that she would be leaving WhatsApp. It's a very interesting message. So it wasn't addressed to me personally. Did she say why? Yes, she was unhappy with their new privacy policy. Uh, this has been recorded in May 2021. So she was leaving them and she was moving over to a platform called Telegram. I believe. Yeah, that's supposed to be more secure. I'm not on Telegram, but I've heard it's... Uh, has better privacy features. Yeah, because I think after a delay, WhatsApp now are going to change their privacy policy. They wanted to do it about a year ago, but there was so much of a backlash. That means opposition from people who are on the platform that they delayed it. But now they are going to go ahead with it. And there are a few people who've decided they'll move to another platform. Mm -hmm. So she's going to go on to telegram do you know many people who are on telegram yes i know a few people on telegram and they're very happy with it so i think it's a good service and if you are worried about privacy it's probably a good choice to make if you go to the website mentioningles.com you'll see lots of free exercises and many of the exercises have a drop down menu what's that well it's a menu so you have a choice of options and it drops down when you click something with your mouse. Here, drop down is a phrasal adjective. So it's describing the menu and letting you know what kind of menu it is. It's a drop down menu because it drops down. There's another interesting expression with a preposition and that's on charge. Now, the verb to charge your device means to connect it to the electricity. So you charge your phone, you charge your laptop. But if it's on charge, that means it's being charged at the moment. It's receiving the current. So where's my phone? Oh, it's on charge. It's being charged at the moment. There are many phrasal verbs connected to the digital world. Now, just to remind you, a phrasal verb is a verb plus a preposition, and they must always 
go together. Because if you don't have the preposition and you only have the verb, it has a completely different meaning. For example, the word take can have many meanings. Yeah, you can take a um, bus, but to take up is not the same as take. You can take up an offer. It means accept. So take up is a phrasal verb. If I don't have the word up and I just say take, it means something different. So that's a phrasal verb. Now, we've already said lots of things with prepositions and verbs, but they weren't phrasal verbs. Whenever we said to you, download from the cloud to your device, there was no phrasal verb there because the verb is to download. It's not download from. You don't have to say download from to mean descargar. Download is descargar. However, if you have an object, your phone, ah, then you have to say from. So you download from where? From your phone. So the word from there is a preposition, but it's not part of a phrasal verb. It's added to it when necessary. A bit like listen to a podcast. Which is what many listeners forget. When we get messages from you, sometimes you do forget to say listen to so we enjoy listening to you. And that's understandable because that preposition to there, it isn't part of the verb. If I want to say in English, escucha, I say, listen. Ah, uh, But if I want to say, escúchame, then I have to say, listen to me. I've got to add the preposition to. So it's not a phrasal verb. Phrasal verbs are when the preposition is an integral part of the verb. You cannot leave it out ever or you'll be saying something else. So there are many phrasal verbs connected to technology. The first one we could use as an example is to back up. You back up data or files or folders. That means you make another copy. How often do you back up your computer? Mm, about every half a year or so, not very often. And you? Every week. <laughs> oh, right. That, that's quite a lot, isn't it? It depends how much information's going on your computer. If you're backing up every six months, you have to think that you could possibly lose five and a half months of data. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. I should probably back up a bit more. Craig, if you hear the expression hook up cables, what do you understand by that? Well, we've had hooked on recently, which means addicted, but hook up means to connect. So you can hook up with another person. That means you connect with them. You have a conversation, you get in touch. If you hook up your cables, then you're connecting your cables to something. So you can hook up your screen to your computer, for example, or hook up your lights to the circuit. Another important phrasal verb you'll need is to log in, L-O-G, log in or sign in, S-I-G-N. That means you need to put a password to get access to something on your phone or on your computer. Now, I, I use a, a password manager called LastPass, which means I can log in or sign in to all of my web pages, all of my services, if I remember just one Password. So I need to remember that one password and automatically it logs me in or signs me in to the other services. Notice I put the object in the middle there between the verb and the preposition. Log me in, sign me in. Now, Craig, I think which causes great confusion for me and I'd remind listeners that I do teach English is the I think I think they know Reza <laughs> that, that I'm confused. <laughs> no, no, that you teach English. So I think I think the listeners know that. <laughs> so the the thing that really I can't get my head around is is there any difference between log in and log on? Because I hear them both, and I checked it on internet, and when I was searching the web, in some places they said it's log on, for example, to a website. That means you don't need a password. But in other places I looked, they said, it doesn't make a difference. Log in, log on is the same. You need a password. What's your take? What's your approach to this? For me, it's the same. I think if you log on, that usually means you put in your username and your password. So I would use those interchangeably. Log in or log on or sign in. 
However, there is another phrasal verb that's similar, but it has a different meaning, to sign up for something. Here we have a three-word phrasal verb, to sign up for a service. Recently, for example, I signed up for a transcription service called Otter AI, which I'm very happy with. When you sign up for a service, that means you start paying for it, although it can be free because sometimes they have free plans, but you're initiating your relationship with that company or with that service. So to sign up for a product or a service. Have you signed up for anything recently? Not recently, no, but in the past I've signed up for plenty of things. Craig, sometimes you're asked to key in a password. Does that mean that I have to go and look for my front door key? No, you don't use a physical key, although you do have physical keys usually, although not always, on your keyboard. So the keys on your keyboard, you're keying in a password. You're using the letters and numbers and symbols on your keyboard to key in a password. Now, I imagine lots of our listeners already know the phrasal verbs turn on, turn off, because they're very important words, right? For any piece of machinery, not just digital machinery, you turn on and off a TV, a radio, a light, etc. Turn on, turn off. But what about power up and power down? Well, power up for me means basically to turn on a computer which is completely off. You know how you can have a computer in standby or hibernate or different modes? So if it's completely off, everything's off and you hit that button somewhere which has no light and then after you hit it, a light goes on, the first light, you're powering up the computer. Would you agree? Yes, so the power is getting to the device. So powering up and powering down. And when you power down and you turn off your device, you can also say shut down, S-H-U-T. You can say shut the door, which means close the door. And if you shut down your device, then you're turning off the power. So just to clarify, if everything's turned off, first you might have to power up your computer. And then when it's ready, then you might have to log in. If there's a password required to open everything in your computer, then after you've powered up, you might perhaps have to log in if you have password protection. Exactly. When you're searching through your feeds on your social media sites or looking at a Word document, you're probably scrolling through it. To scroll in Spanish, if you speak Spanish, is desplazarse. And a scroll is from before we had books. If you go back to paper, which is already becoming history, and you go back further into pre-books, paper or parchment, we used to write on scrolls like a piece of toilet paper in a round thing and you would scroll, you would use the scroll to read the text. So the verb to scroll through something is just to go up or down using the mouse in the software or your finger on your phone. So you can scroll down or you can scroll up, right? Or you can scroll through a feed. So if you do use Twitter, you, you're scrolling through your Twitter feed, which is being constantly updated. Now, I'm sure all of you have been using your computer at home, particularly if it's internet, and suddenly something just appears. It pops up. So to pop up is to suddenly appear. And we often combine that phrase of verb, pop up, to a noun. So we say a pop-up window, a pop-up menu. So it popped up by clicking one thing, another window or menu appears on your screen. I hate it. I hate pop-ups. I don't know about you, but that's one thing that really, really annoys me. I can't stand pop-ups when things pop up for no reason. Yep. And also in some, have you noticed on some web pages, you're mousing and uh, mousing around with your cursor and you're going up the page. Maybe you're scrolling down, you're scrolling up. When you go to exit the web page and click the window, there's a pop-up. Yeah. 
it appears because they know you're leaving the web page. Yeah. That, in my opinion, should be illegal. <laughs> it should be. No, because it's, it's deceit because they know that you're going to that area of the screen to leave. And that's why they put the pop up there and they're making you accidentally click on something to prevent you from leaving. I, I can consider it deception. I think it should be made illegal. I think you shouldn't be allowed to put pop-ups in the corner of the screen. I'm not joking. They are very effective. The uh, data shows that they're very effective, but I, I don't like them at all. If you download to your device a new app, very often you have to set it up. There's a phrasal verb, to set up something. You may have heard set up when you speak about a business. So you set up a business, you set up an organization, you start it. It's a similar idea with an app. So when you set up your app, you are configuring the different settings inside the app. So you can set up an app and also set up an account with a company. Craig mentioned that paper is not as important as it used to be, perhaps these days, but still we, we do use it for plenty of things and it combines with digital technology and it's uh, needed to print out something. So you're looking at something digitally, but you think that a paper copy or paper version of that would be useful. So then you print it out. Some people also say print off. Which do you prefer, Craig? Print out or print off? I think I use print out. I don't know why they're both acceptable, but I would tend to say, yeah, I need to print out some documents or I need to print out this form. What, what do you say? Usually out as well, but I've, I've heard people say off. Yeah. If there's a problem with a company's server it's possible that you cannot reach their website and then you would say that the site's gone down. So to go down means to not be online. It's not reachable. It's not available. And if you hear someone say, oh, today for two hours, TikTok was down. I couldn't see any videos. If you hear that preposition down, that means it wasn't reachable and you could not find it on the internet. Very topical subject at the moment is privacy. We mentioned privacy earlier with Telegram and WhatsApp, but many services now give you the option to opt in or opt out of collecting advertising data. For example, the people we have this podcast hosted by is a company called Libsyn and they are opt in, which means automatically they're not collecting your data so they don't know who you are. But if you want them to know, you can opt in. So there's lots of conversations going on at the moment with podcasters and other services. Should it be opt out or should it be opt in? Craig, I'm noticing more and more and more of those annoying pop-up windows as I go to websites these days asking me to either opt in or opt out. It's becoming far more common than it used to be. I would say... On an average day using internet at home, I probably come across at least three pop-up windows, perhaps more, asking me to opt in or opt out of preferences a day. I find it very tedious. Out of curiosity, if you get these pop-up windows, do you always opt in? Or yes. Or do you ever opt out? Always opt in. To everything? Yep. Even the bit that says... Advertising that we think you might like, but written in a fancy way, in a legal way, you opt in? Yeah, I've got no problem with them knowing everything about me. What do you think are the advantages of that? You get advertisements that you're at least interested in and that are relevant to your life. And also, I know that when I'm on the internet, nothing is private. And I'm okay with that because of what it gives me. So I have no problem with people knowing about everything I put on the internet, but I am very careful about what goes on the internet. And speaking of spam and receiving messages that you don't really want, you can filter out spam. Now, I have three different email accounts, and in my opinion, the best email account for filtering out spam is Gmail, which you also have. I think their spam filter is very good. Do you agree? No, I don't. 
I think Hotmails is better. Or really? Outlook. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. In my experience from the, the stuff I get. Yeah. Does that surprise you? It does. Yeah. It does because I get a lot more spam through Hotmail and Yahoo than I do through Gmail. See, a lot more of my spam gets sent to spam in Hotmail than it does in Gmail. But I do think I get more spam, but it goes to spam in Hotmail. I don't get as much spam in Gmail, but more of it sneaks in past the spam box. So do you check your spam folder to see if there's anything that's been filtered out that shouldn't have been? Yeah, every once in a while, and important things do get there. Yeah, Two or three times now, a message telling me that uh, I've been given work as a Cambridge examiner, which is pretty important, has gone to my spam. Mm-hmm. So just as well I just as well I check. Has there anything like that ever happened to you? I don't usually check my spam folder, so I just ignore it and hope yeah. that the spam filter is doing doing its job. You can filter out spam and you can also send out emails. So there's another phrasal verb to send out emails over the internet and if you want to receive our newsletter you can sign up for it at inglespodcast.com and we'll send out an email to you every month with news about the podcast we also remind you that you can sign up for the mansion ingles email and we'll send out an email every two weeks full of exercises and material at different levels go to mansioningles.com to sign up for the mansion ingles email And now it's your turn to practice your English. If you'd like to send us a voice message, you can reach us on SpeakPipe. That's S-P-E-A-K-P-I-P-E dot com slash English podcast. Emails, Reza? If you want to write to us, you can find Craig at Craig at EnglishPodcast dot com or me, BelfastReza at gmail dot com. And if you'd like to download some paid courses from our webpage to your device go to store s-t-o-r-e dot dot net as always we'd like to thank all of you who help us through the patreon scheme patreon is a program where for as little as a dollar 20 per month the 20 is to cover tax the vat by the way you will get instant access to all our recent transcriptions as a way of saying thank you for your donation. So if you're interested, have a look at Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash English podcast. We'd like to thank recent supporters of our Patreon scheme, people who have joined us this month. Many thanks to Jefferson Zambrano, Juan Antonio Solera Villena, Cesar Lorenzo, Ginez Rodriguez, and Andreas and Jessica. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you to all of our lovely Patreon supporters. What's next week, Reza? On next week's episode, we've got anybody, anyone, nobody, no one, somebody, someone, and most importantly, everybody and everyone. So anyone who is anyone would want to listen to that next week. Thank you so much for keeping us company and joining us this week. Thank you to Lorenzo for your idea for this week's topic. Please stay safe. Have a great week. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's Reza signing off. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later. <laughs>